Hi, I'm Michael. And I'm Halif. And this is our girl, Kana. If you're new around here, we've been traveling in the Pacific Northwest, full time in our Coachman Galleria. Now, we're in beautiful Washington State, where every day is a new adventure. Absolutely beautiful morning. It's hard to complain. <laughs> this beach is amazing. Some of the kelp down here you can just pick right off the beach and eat. Hey, good morning guys. We are still here at the Kift House at Discovery Bay, Washington State. And this is such a beautiful day so far. After last week's video of crab fishing here in Discovery Bay, we thought that, hey, there's another thing that's so abundantly available here that we would like to explore, which is collecting seaweed. That's right, so many seaweed around here and we always wonder whether they are edible. So we did a lot of research and the answer Strictly speaking, yes, all the seaweed available here are edible. However, some of them may not be tasty, but it's all edible. Unlike mushroom that could be poisonous, seaweed is good to go. But before we do that, it is worth mentioning that the state of Washington requires anybody to obtain a valid seaweed collection permit. And this is the same permit that allows you to collect the shellfish and seaweed at the same time. So we're gonna go down to the beach and then see what we can find at the beach. We'll find out what that one is. We got a lot of it though. Uh, the spiral rack is something I'm looking for. Oh man, bounty. I feel like the green stuff's gonna be the best. It looks the most edible. You're gonna edible. Need it right now. <laughs> can you? I am. Oh my god. It's good. I liked it. I mean, the, the right amount of saltiness. Nori. Nori. Oh, yeah. This one is spiral rack. It's got these little fingers. Oh. Check this out, guys. I have no idea what this is, but it just looked like a tentacles of some sort. That is bizarre. What is it? Yeah, I'm not going to touch it. I can definitely see the tide start rolling in, but we still have a section of the beach that is available for identifying purpose. Almost right away, I see at least four different kinds of seaweed, and I would love to grab them and perhaps identify them and see what they are. So this is mostly just like mid-tide because the ocean recedes all the way down farther out than this. And this is the line where the high tide is actually reach the beach. So this whole thing during the high tide is covered by water. And of course, there's a lot of goodies too that you can find here on the line. Either you can trust them to collect them this way, but also you can cut them fresh from the source. So the majority of the seaweed that we found this morning is already loose. However, the permit requires you to have a pair of scissors or any kind of cutting mechanism so that you can actually sustainably cut them and not disturbing the root system. Therefore, they can keep growing and keep producing the seaweed that the ocean needs. So for the sake of it, I'm gonna show you cutting it with scissors. Okay, we are done harvesting and I collect a few samples that we would like to try. You can only collect maximum of 10 pounds of the wet weight of seaweed per day per person, but this is definitely less than 10 pounds and they also require you to bring a scale to make sure that this is not exceeding 10 pounds. And this is what we have. Just barely made it to two pounds with the metal container. Okay, we are back at the gift house and the next logical step is just to wash the seaweed thoroughly with warm water. Alright, this 
just the aftermath. This is the undesirable, I guess. We're gonna dump it to the garbage disposal. Look how slimy this thing is. And this is why you have to clean your seaweed really well because there are a lot of sand. Definitely not something you wanna eat. And, ta-da! This is what we collected so far. Let's try to make this pretty for identification purpose. There you go. That's my sample platter. Okay, this is the fun part because we're trying to identify all of the seaweed. We have eight distinctive seaweed that we collected this morning. With that said, I think two of the eight is actually from the same species. Number one, we have something that's called a sea lettuce. It seems like it is just a bright green salad style seaweed. This is the most appealing because it reminds you of some kind of lettuce or some kind of things you can find in your salad bowl. And it's edible when it's raw. Not bad, actually it's pretty good. It's not salty at all. It just seems like you're just eating lettuce. I definitely eat that in a fresh salad. The next one is something that's called a purple lover. It doesn't seem like a plant or seaweed because it is like a transparent form and it does sort of look like the uh, sea lettuce except this is purple or brownish color I guess and this is supposed to be also edible in the raw form that's pretty good <laughs> it's pretty damn good it doesn't really taste anything really and here we have something that's called I believe the eel grass this is basically it looks like just a grass in your yard except this is in the ocean and they can go pretty long. I did not harvest this at all. This was already on the beach when we got it. Look at that, that's pretty long. And next we have something that's called the Turkish washcloth. It doesn't seem like you can eat this because when you touch it, it just feels like rubber and it is covered by a lot of small bumps. You know, you almost can use this as a luva to clean yourself up. It doesn't look appealing to me at all. I don't think I'm gonna eat it raw. But anyway, there you have it. The two species one is some kind of kelp, definitely. They have like a leafy part. I don't think it's edible in the raw form. And the last two are pretty repulsive to me because they are extremely slimy. Even though I wash it multiple times in fresh water, in the dry format, it is also still slimy. This is called the spiral rack. And the other one is also some kind of kelp, but this is again, very long and very slimy. But next we have all the seaweed in the oven. We try to dry them out. That's when we're gonna taste every single one of them in a very dry state. Since we don't have dehydrator, we're gonna use the oven to dry out all of the seaweed. Let's have a generous coat of oil. It's been four hours cooking at 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's see how our seaweed is doing. Ooh, definitely smell like seaweed. So this is what comes down to. Yeah, this is a bit crunchy. It's definitely what I'm looking for in the seaweed. Enough baking for now, and we're gonna try the seaweed to see how it tastes like. All right, now we come to the fun part of it because we're gonna taste some of the seaweed. I prepared two different batches of seaweed. One is prepared in the oven in form of dehydrated seaweed. And the other one, I actually kept them in the open air under the sun, so it is kind of naturally dried out. So we're gonna have a comparison how they turn out. If you actually notice, the one that came out from the oven actually pretty oily because I added olive oil and I may accidentally added too much olive oil, unfortunately. Let's see, this is the sea lettuce and I've heard it all across the board that this is actually pretty tasty. I already tried raw and it was great. And see how the cook form tastes like. Oh, mmm. I'm sure you've had it before, the Japanese snack that you kind of peel off and you got like sheets of seaweed. That reminds me a lot of those snacks minus the salt. 
because I washed it really really well the salt was also kind of washed off but the texture the back of the throat taste it is very oceany so I like that a lot all right let's see so this is the Turkish washcloth visually this is the least desirable seaweed because all the bumps hmm wow the texture reminds me of pork rind so it is really crunchy and a little bit chewy wasn't as bad as I thought would be and it's not over salted I would do that again that was actually pretty good with that said let's try a little bit of the sun-dried turkey washcloth okay that's definitely a lot more leathery mm. the sun-dried Turkish washcloth that's pretty mouthful the sun-dried Turkish washcloth is a little bit more leathery than the oven part but tastes good just the texture is something off because it just feels like you're chewing leather which is it doesn't sound good at all all right next the seagrass mm. that one is pretty grassy I mean it doesn't break down so the whole strand of grass is kind of crunching into like little mush and I can't separate it by biting it through so it's just similar to like the land grass really except you have that little slightly back of the throat ocean taste which is not bad it's actually pretty good next is the kelp hmm I just get the burn part of it this is really tough you can hear it just really brittle and crunchy not bad this is good so I get some edges of the kelp that kind of burned in the process and that becomes sharp is not the right word of it but it's a little bit more dense not bad okay next is the spiral rack and this is also pretty brittle mm. I like the texture the texture overall is pretty similar all of them are crunchy if you like seafood the spiral rack this is probably a really good one for you because it is the most pronounced seafood taste of all of the seaweed that I've tasted so far seems like you're just licking the back of a crab Cheryl how about that <laughs> and lastly the purple lover oh that one was good the stilettos is almost tastes like nothing with a little hint of salt but this has more like seafood abundance taste to it so I do like that okay the verdict personally I like the sea lettuce the best simply because it reminds me of the actual land lettuce and it tastes somewhat like that in my head even though they have some kind of taste of salt uh, but it is completely washed off and I can see that chopped up in like a fresh salad or you want to put it in the oven and that's gonna turn out really well so that's my favorite my least favorite is probably the spiral wreck personally I don't really eat a lot of seafood because I have some allergic reaction to it therefore I never really developed the sense of liking the seafood much and that tastes a very seafoody to me and also the seagrass I'm not sure I actually care about it because it doesn't really taste that I expected from seaweed but it is literally almost like chewing a grass but I'm glad I had it though leave in the comment below if you have any preference or least preference of what you've seen so far which one you will try which one you would not try and let us know that's it guys if you like this video please give a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to follow along with our journey all around the United States and Canada and beyond and hit the bell for any notification. Thanks for watching. Data. Sorry. No worries, you're good. <laughs>